Hello, so today's walk, we're gonna to go to Happersage again. Second attempt, this time I've got my wallet on me. So uh, let's see how we get on. Castleton to Happersage is about seven and a half miles. The sun's out. It was a nice inversion this morning, but I couldn't be bothered to get out of bed. I fueled up on me bacon and egg cob. So loads of history in this walk. We've got everything. Two castles I'd never even heard of, graves, Roman forts, you name it. So without further ado, we'll crack on. That's the old mill, 17th century mill. I've done loads on that before, so I won't bore you. I'll put a few key points up, but it's an old wall mill that went bankrupt. There was a huge cloud inversion this morning over much of the Peak District. The one day I had to wait in for a delivery, so I didn't get a chance to go out, but apparently it was uh, covering everywhere and still see elements of it there. We're headed down here anyway, towards Hope. You can tell which way the wind blows, can't you? <laughs> Look at them trees. Oh, what an angle. Normally it comes whistling down when it's past. The river's looking a bit high today, we have a lot of rain. Not as high as it can be, you can see it comes up as this high in some cases, but uh, not today. Beautiful, glorious day. You can hear all the birds singing and everything. Spring is on its way. But anyway, yeah, look at that mist. The last remnants of that inversion I was on about. But yeah, a bit boggy underfoot today. Um, trying a few different things out. Finally realised I can put my trot up on the end of my extendable a pole thing, so that makes life a bit easier. Uh, so not like a big moon face like that. But yeah, glorious, glorious day. Anyway, the bus ride on the back's going to be the thing today. Um, there's something called the Bradwell Gap, which is quite notorious around here, and the bus passes through it, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Although in my law, I'll probably miss them. I'm throwing my hand in with the... Uh, Bus company's reliable service. It's about as reliable as my bloody Range Rover, apparently. So uh, I'm hoping to get back. <laughs> but anyway, let's crack on down here and I'll catch up with you in a bit. Peaks whole water there. You can fish in this. Wouldn't mind dropping a line in there. But it's quite high at the moment uh, for what it normally is. So, uh, absolutely stunning little brook. We'll see where the River No joins that in a bit and then that flows into the Derwent. So, we'll see all of that before we get to Happersage. This looks fucking interesting. Jesus, man. On the logs. Great panoramic of the Hope Valley here, Peveril Castle, Winnets Pass, Mam Tor, Hollins Cross, Back Tor, Lewes Hill, over there through there is the reservoirs, and that's Wim Hill. And we're headed this way. In fact, I don't think that's a reservoir at all, that's a crock of shit. I think that is uh, where the River Now goes, up to Edale. So, uh, train lines here, so the big train line runs through here from the uh, cement works so uh, one day I'll catch a train coming along there <laughs> I've been close so many times and always missed it but it always impresses me um, if I remember rightly a few years back I, I'm in an institute, institute of mechanical engineers I'm a fellow in there actually and uh, I interview engineers who want to become chartered I'm pretty certain I interviewed the guy who had something to do with 
extending the sidings there. Fascinating the amount of logistics involved in that sort of activity. It really was. I really love this mound here. Makes you wonder if that's something, doesn't it? Just looks artificial the way it just comes out of landscape, whether that's mining or burial mound with all those trees on it. it. Certainly makes you wonder, doesn't it? But anyway, it's really boggy underfoot today, as I thought it would be. The amount of rain we've had over the last uh, several weeks, really. Surprised we've not had floods again. This was on the uh, walk last time, but see how the bark's all been stripped? That's normally deer, I think. Unless the sheep have been nibbling at it, they'll eat out, won't they? But yeah, the whole look at it, it's been stripped. Coming from in too small because small, it's not underneath. So we have got deer around here and they do like bark. So maybe that's what it is. How cool is that? They're having that away, aren't they? Look. See, we'd have been gnawing away at it. I'm suspecting that couldn't be sheep. They're more grazers than uh, chomping away at bark like that. So, could be deer. Who knows? I've seen quite a few around here, especially in the early hours of the morning. So, uh, maybe in summer I should start getting up a bit earlier. <laughs> uh, still gutted about missing that cloud inversion. I just seem to be not an early riser, <laughs> I'm more of a night owl, so uh, I'll have to make the effort. I think you can get some apps, can't you, now, that uh, give you the best chances of uh, getting one by predicting it. Every style's like this. <laughs> mud, glorious mud. That's when proper boots come in. Like scarpers. Never brigaded the white trainers. <laughs> No, mate. They ain't going to be white when you get to the end of that, mate. They're coming right up to the top of my scorpers, so they're going to have a field day down there. <laughs> I did warn them, but uh, people don't tend to listen these days because they all know best, don't they? Anyway. Not my shit show. So we're just coming into Hope now. I'll show you a couple of bits here. Um, I'm going to be lazy and go through this gate, I think. Or you wouldn't until you see it was locked. <laughs> That'll teach me. That'll lure me, as they used to say. My missus's pet hate that. That, and can you, can you, can you borrow us that, please? That's another one. <laughs> What's your favourite? Your favourite bad use of the English language. So this is Pin, Pindale Lane here. Go through to Castleton, do that walk quite a lot in summer. And two kids there on bikes come whizzing down that lane in the car and stop. Fuck me, mate. Then they ploughed into the back of that. That would have been, that would have made good fun. This is Ackles Lane, which we're going up. And then we cut across to uh, Broth. Up here, there's uh, the site of an old cross, but I came on a video looking for that, and it ended up being a, uh, ended up being in, being in the churchyard down the bottom there. There's also in Hope, you can't see it from the road, but over there, a bit of private land, actually the last bit of uh, earthworks of a mott castle. I never knew there's a castle in Hope. Uh, I did my series on castles. I'll put a link up to it. That wasn't one of them that came up. Let me make sure I did my research a bit better. But yeah, not much left now apparently. But we're going to see another one later on as well that I didn't know existed. But we're heading up here and over to a, a Roman fort of Navio over at Bruff. Again, I've been there before, but I'll give you some spiel on it when we get there. You can see where at Bridges. I'll zoom in. That's where the No comes in to join, or the Peaks Old Water joins the No, should I say and then carries on over there. So then now flows all the way up through there, up through Edale, up onto Kinder Scout. I think there's a place called No Stall, which I'm assuming is probably where the source is. But uh, yeah, this is an old track through to Bruff, so we're gonna follow that 
There's a campsite down there, it's really popular. But we're going to head up through over here. I think that's broken. I don't know why I've been trying to talk in a Somerset accent. I've been watching a couple of things, Hot Fuzz. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen This Country on BBC. Well worth a watch. About sort of a, like a mockumentary about uh, teenagers in rural England. Absolutely at their risk. Give it a shot on BBC iPlayer. Well worth it. <laughs> I won't say much more about it because you have to watch it to appreciate it. But yeah, stunning views across the edges there. Um, towards Bamford and then Stanage and across towards Baslow and Kerbar etc. So yeah, I think I have to put that on my list to do that. The old Nine Edges walk. Um, you reckon you could do that in a day or maybe overnight. I'm uh, looking at tents at the moment to be honest with you. I think I'm doing a bit of camping. I've not camped for about 40 odd years probably. Maybe a bit less, probably 35 years since I was in the Scouts and a Scout leader and I used to do a bit myself. I used to have an old Phoenix Freak. For those of you back in the day, that was a tent to have. A uh, really good, probably be a good tent now, to be honest with you. It was literally three poles, I think, if I remember rightly. That was a cracking tent, that. Stand up to all weathers. But yeah, so I'm having a look at a few things now. So, any advice on one man tents, drop it below. I'm looking at the Noor tent. Uh, that looks pretty cool, and uh, one of the Fjellbergs. The Felberg Ravens, they look quite good tents as well, but uh, we'll see how the year progresses. Probably won't be to summer anyway. This is the back of uh, Hope Cement Works. I think that's where you walk through to uh, Bradwell. Done that up before as well. I'll put a little bit of a, a thing up, I think, you know what I mean. But yeah, you not be working in that today, would you? It's like a right bog fest. Not far now, we just go down this dip. And then we're up to the Roman Fort of Navio at Brough. So this is a Roman Fort of Navio. You can see the bank here. So this consisted of a Roman fort and a uh, um, viscus, which is like the, or victus, I feel viscus, something like that. It's a little village and everyone that surrounds a fort, you know, tradesmen, farmers, servants, slaves, whatever. But, uh, this was uh, in place about 250 years, I think, up to about 350 AD. Um, in the middle, there we are, there's some few rocks left. Um, they did an excavation and found like a part of a tribune's, like a cellar or with a shrine to a local goddess of a spring. Um, Navio means place where two rivers meet, because obviously you've got the road, the Derwent, Navio and all that uh, river. Uh, Brough is old English for fort, so it all carries on. And this was the main road from Buxton through to Melandra at Glossop and then on to Manchester, and then through to Templeborough, up on the River Don. So this was to protect the lead mining, basically, in the area. There's a lot of lead mines and everything. And this is where they found the last few stones. There's quite a good exhibit in Buxton Museum. But yeah, cracking. So, that's the Roman Fort of Navio. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head down towards Haffersidge. So we're going to go down to the village of Shatton next. There's a really cool ford there. And then we're going to walk along the river, like I say, to Haffersidge, past the places like Offerton Hall and quite a few bits of interesting uh, history on the way. And then Haffersidge itself, I can't pronounce Haffersidge, Haffersidge, no, I, I give up, Haffersidge, right? <laughs> uh, then we're going to have a wander around there. There's a few good things to see there. And then we're going to get the bus back, which comes through Bradwell and the infamous Bradwell Gap. Wash the pound of mud off my boots.
that's the stream that runs through Bradwell. I'll find out what that's called. But yeah, that goes down to meet the river now. But yeah, mate, you have to have a bit of a, bit of a good stride to get over that fucker, aren't you? Anyway, let's give it a go. Non-shell pass. There's the river there. It's the river now. It's me sort of the dirt went down here. I'll make a good picture actually. Fucking hell. Makes you wonder if that was deliberate, wasn't it? Look at that tree there. That's gonna make a bit of firewood, isn't it? Turn and shot a mum tour there. This is so slippy today. It's making it quite tiring actually. They went to my arse about four times up there. Anyway, it's just like waterlogged. Well, yeah, up here onto Townsfield Lane. Apparently, that's an old route, although I think the new road's slightly above the old one. The old one is a fantastic old hollowway, apparently. So, I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that or not. But that goes down to Shatton, which has been around for quite a while. But I'll do a bit more when we get to Shatton. Ever get the sense you're being watched? <laughs> Stunning views there. I'm trying to think what day that is. Comes up atop of Shatton Moor. That could be a nice walk as the nature reserve there. I think I came down there and back up there onto the old Roman road. I'm trying to think what it's called now. Bruff Lane, I think runs across the top. We're coming down onto, I think this is Townsfield Lane here. Yeah, it looks like it. Stunning there, that. I'll make a good picture, I think. I'll get his telegraph pole out of the way. These are all in lamb. They'll be giving birth soon. Can't wait for that to happen when they're all just full of like, fields are full of lambs jumping around. It's brilliant. That's when you know springs here. Anyway, we're off down here on the Townsfield Lane if we're not already on it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be in Shatton then. There's an old hall down there, Shatton Hall. Don't know much about that. I'll find out and put it up on the screen. But this is Townsfield Lane. Uh, apparently somewhere down there is an older route, like I said earlier, like an old holloway, but uh, I don't think you can use that anymore. But anyway, we'll follow this down to the village and to quite a cool ford, which if judging by the rain recently might be in a good set of spate. Look at that, wonder if some old hippie lives in there, that'd be such a cool place to live, wouldn't it? I've always fancied the idea of that, you know, just going wherever you want. Could just be a makeshift stable for horses though. But uh, that would be cool. <laughs> Catkins are out. They were a few a couple of weeks ago when I went out on a walk. And then this path comes down here, passes us barn by the looks of it. And how cool is that? Or is that even somewhere like a holiday vet? Cool, this is the old Holloway Lane here, look, you can see how deep that is. Cool. People are going down there for hundreds of years, if not more. Anything on, old, on our old uh, map that joins two villages, any footpath like that's probably been around for maybe up to a thousand years. I guess old barn. Take a good pick that. Here's a ford. Not too bad actually. I was after a slight deviation. I was going to cut across a footpath across the field, but this looks far more interesting. This is Shatton Ford.
see that. How cool is that? Beautiful little old village this Shatton. I'll find out some details on it and I'll tell you about it in a sec. So, the lovely village of Shatton, which means in the nook of land between two streams, which is where the River Noe and the Derwent meet down here. So that's hence why that's called that. So uh, that's interesting enough. And it used to be an old salter's route. So salt was a big thing. And back in the day, used to come over from the Cheshire Plains and the river areas, through over the tops from Sheffield and Manchester and that way. So uh, this is one of those routes through Bamford, I think. So we've been around a while as a little settlement. So yeah, really interesting that, but we're going to head down here to where it does meet the Derwent. So we'll catch up with you when we get back down to the river. Some very nice houses here. I didn't realise it's an external mic. It takes a couple of seconds to come through. So <laughs> I don't know how it's sounding. It's a Hollyland Lock too, which looked quite good. I've got eight to nine hours battery life on it, so you can just leave it on. Um, just a simple, you need a media mod on the GoPro, but just takes a simple three and a half jack into the back. Also works on my camera, so quite handy that. But yeah, this is a very quaint little village, isn't it? Very well to do, I think. Look at that old place there. Uh, that's all the old window frames as well. Need a few bob to live here, I think. They look like a Tudor look to them, don't they? I'll check, it's probably been here since the Doomsday book, I suspect. Um, and then we're going to end up in Haffersage soon ish. We'll probably just over halfway around, I think. So, uh, quite a pleasant walk and a quite a pleasant day, really. So, yeah, hoping to get out a bit more often. Um, I had an absolute nightmare the last couple of weeks. I won't go into too much detail, but my missus was going in for a major operation. Um, she has epilepsy, so she's got like a VNS fitted, which is like a pacemaker for your brain. Just keeps seizures down. They knew about this for at least three months for the operation. Even had the anaesthetist come to her when she was there in a gown, sign it all off. Came to take her down to the theatre. Oh no, can't do that because of the VNS. Well, I can switch it off. Doesn't matter. No, not doing it. And then discharged her. So not even like referred her back anywhere so we're back to square one so MPs on the case, pals have been notified so you know quite a lot on at the moment but we'll get there I've crossed the wrong people believe me Hello I think I'm okay because it's gone the 8th of January we could have took the note then that's cool look at that Well, not quite the same. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn the mic down a bit because that's looking like it's over the top. That looks better. Yeah. So I'm going to have to tune that on the audio. So, this is where the No joins the Derwent. Look at that. Superb. Never realised it was that close to Shatton where it came in. But, uh, it's fantastic that is. And we're going to follow the Derwent now. There's a really good walk you can do called the Derwent Heritage Trail. That's another good three days walk or so. It's about 56 miles right the way down to where it meets the Trent up from like the Derwent Reservoirs. That's another one to add to the list. That'll go through some really good history like through the mills and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to take a quick picture and then we'll carry on. Every style you come to is like this. Absolute bog fest, so slippy. There's quite a few people been going over by Peveril Castle in the last couple of weeks, mountain rescue out for broken ankles. Not surprising, really. So that's very slippy and very steep.
that cool waterfall there. That's uh, Upperhurst Brook, when the little brooks come in here, it's fantastic. And up there is Opperton Hall or House, that's a really old place. I did a walk where I came up over the, from Bradwell, up over the tops, off Opperton Moor there, down to there and then across to Shatton and back up and over to Bradwell again. That was a good walk, I did that in winter, but it's a hell of a climb. Oh yeah, mate. <laughs> so, uh, been getting fit this week, giving up the booze and uh, been doing hits routines, bloody hell mate. And I'm so unfit. <laughs> I want to lose two stone before summer and get some uh, good stuff done, so determined this time. I think the easiest way for me is just not to drink at all. I have trouble with me as I have a two or three pints and then buff the switch goes and it's ah, Viking. <laughs> not good, not good. Not when we get to pushing 60 anyway. So uh, time to slow down a bit, I think. But yeah, lovely open meadows here. I bet this makes superb like grazing land. Look, it's just so flat and rich. A do in there. But I'd love to wet a line in that, you know. Bit of some nice trout and stuff and that in there. Been nice and clean this far up. So it gets down towards the lower end towards Derby. But I think they've cleaned it up quite a bit now. You get some big barble down there and I think they may even have the odd salmon in it. But who knows? cool old barn. I don't know if there's any owls in it. Some shit in it, that's for sure. Is it? beams. Not so old by the looks of it. Cool. Hello. Yep. Nothing for you mate. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Beautiful. Beautiful. Comes down from Old Clough apparently up on Offerton Moor, which is just up there as is the uh, hall and that. I think there's never hall up there as well. Apparently down here some stepping stones, but I don't think they're going to be uh, passable today. Superb. How long before that tree goes in, eh? Bloody hell. <laughs> Oh, you can't be clearer than that, mate, can you? Duh. It's fairly obvious where the footpath goes, but, you know, you have to explain it sometimes. This is fucking lethal. Absolutely lethal, mate. So slippy. It's just like a mud bath. Whoa. Shit in hell, mate. Every gate's on lock so far. It's ridiculous. Whoa! Slip slide into the river, mate. A little shed there. Maybe it's for boating, fishing, or something. Eh? That's the stepping stones today, mate. For weir. <laughs> no chance of getting across there, pal. I wouldn't risk that. Nope. So, uh, yeah. In summer though, I'd be worth coming to do that, definitely. But we head off down here. I took a picture of that for the old uh, finger post Friday. Get I shows you how hard this river can get. There's like a crate there. The hell. And it can flood occasionally, but that's some height it must go to. But I guess they also release water from the dams when they get too full as well. So that'd be impressive to see as well. But yeah, you can see Haversage in the distance over there. We'll have to do a bit of climbing when we get there. There's a couple of places I really want to go to while we're there. So, uh, might have to have a stop somewhere for a drink. And I've got a pork pie 
topped with cheese and Branston pickle and a slice of tiffin. Reminds me of a carry on up the car, but that does. <laughs> that looks like an old hall. I think that might be Never Hall. Oh, what a guess. Yeah, Never Hall. I'll look into that. See if we can find out what it is. But that looks again, it's got that Tudor air about it, hasn't it? Shapes of the windows and that. But we're going to crack on down here anyway. Sweet Jesus, fucking hell. <laughs> I should have put my gaiters on. Oh dear. Just go where someone else has trod, I think. They made the pathway for you. Oh. Gordon Bennett. Been better off at Kinder Scout, mate. Recommendation, do this in summer. Ugh. Fuck's sake, mate. <laughs> cool. Anyway, I don't think we've got far to go. That's half a stage over there, so I think we come down to the road and turn left. Uh -huh, this could be interesting. <laughs> Oops. Jesus, I've done the box splits for a while. <laughs> oh. Like an obstacle course, yes. Never mind a walk. Goose nest wood. I don't think we've got too far to go in a way for um, That route down there looks better. Wild garlic starting to come through. Give that month or two this place with a carpet in it. And it'll smell divine if you like garlic. But yeah, definitely garlic there, wild garlic coming through. That's the path gone. To go up around here. Some geese over there. We'll go with this, this is going to be a bit tricky, so I'll take the camera off because when you watch me falling in. <laughs> Stop for your lunch. Can't beat it. Tomato soup, even I'm not sure on the pork pie whether to have a tip in. Well, I know now I've got a beard for tomato soup. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop here, have a break for some lunch, and then uh, head up into Haversage, about 20 minutes up there. And then um, if I've got time, I'm going to go to the church and that. If not, I'll head back on the bus. Oh, look at that, tiffin. Time for tiffin. There you go, Lead Mill Bridge, widened in 1928 by uh, T.W. Horton. Ah, superb. These clearly don't like anyone on their property, the fence a foot off down the middle like that. Fucking nightmare, innit? Eh? Trespass! That must be what they call the tower on the map, see it? I'll zoom in so you can. I'll try and find out a bit about it. That's an old lotus. Very nice. Famous for its uh, outdoor pool, Hathersage. Might like to try that, but it's open quite a lot there and they do food. I'll have to go and try that one day. We're on the main road now. A little bit of a folly up there or something. Well, we're going to head to the church. So, uh, some really interesting stuff to show you there. And then we're going to head back down into the village and get the bus home. Mm -hmm. 
of a fence or wall off. I'll show you what it looked like before. I'll do a side by side. You can see the bricks are all piled up in the lawn, so they must be having to, we'll have to restore it, wouldn't they? But yeah. Here we are at the church. And now it's got to find. Here it is. So, Hathersage and this area has a lot to do with Robin Hood and Little John. And this allegedly is Little John's grave. They excavated this and found a huge thigh bone. Undertaken the care of the grave body, ancient order of foresters. So there you go, who was he? Well, we know about that, don't we? But legend has it that um, it was opened in around 1784 on a large thigh bone, 29 and a half inches in length. It was reckon it was 32. And um, the squire, Captain James Shuttleworth, hung it by his bed. Fascinating. And they reckon there's a few bits like a bow and a cap also linked to him that were hanging up in the church. So, uh, yeah. Is it? Who knows? But uh, the old purported medieval headstone seen in the porch of the church. Shall we go and have a look? So the habit has been uh, rare for quite a while. In a minute we're going to go around to an even older site. But let's go and see if the uh, medieval headstone there. That's a medieval headstone apparently. Is this open? old font there. I love old churches. Quite a large light up when you go in. Belfry. That is stunning. Right, let's go and find this Roman camp now. That's the remains of an old medieval cross. Oh, maybe older than that. I see what I can find out, but I've seen those before, like the one in uh, Castleton and Hope. Hope, sorry, not Castleton. So yeah, definitely. I'll dig out some information on that. But that's just beautiful, that. A lovely little church. And little John's grave. Now we're gonna go up here, just to have a look at this bit here, and then head back down to the, at the bus. This wall here is the remains of the old Ringwork Castle, that would have been Anglo-Saxon and then uh, it would also have been taken over by the Normans in the 12th, 13th century, but you can see the shape of it here. It's called Camp Green, so Anglo-Saxon, maybe even older, possibly the Romans might have even used this, who knows, but uh, certainly the Normans would have made use of it. Fascinating that, isn't it? See the definite shape of it. Obviously people have built houses on it now. But yeah. Snowdrop show in there. The sun's starting to set. So it's time for me to go and get the bus. Half a it's quite an old place. It's been here since uh, it's in the Doomsday book, but it's probably here a long time before that. Quite a bit of history, it's quite small then. I'll put a bit up about it. Um it used to be quite famous for its wire works at one time. So I'll put a bit more info to Little John's Graves uh, key thing as well, but I put a bit up about it, a bit up about the history, so I can't remember it all now. <laughs> and then we're going to carry on, go and get the bus and become a bus wanker for a bit. There we are, and to have a city bus stop snack in the middle. Quite busy today as it always is. I'll get you there when I'm on the bus. Well, looks like Holly's uh, struck again. I was here in time for the 1634, no free sign of it. The next one's 1724. I say if it turns up or it's going to be a long day. Well, the bus finally turned up. So now we're just heading to Bradwell. Here we are, the Bradwell Gap. <laughs> Not much gap there.
there we are back home that was a cracking walk lots of history lots of mud but lots of scenery and also the infamous Bradwell Gap how tight was that anyway another wonderful day's arcing done catch you next time